that uh, brings us back to uh, H4128 of the legal tender bill. Um, we have uh, Mr. Steve Isom of the Lexington County Republican Party. Mr. Chairman, it's an honor to be here before you. My remarks will be brief. Uh, most of you are familiar with H4128. And I will say that for all of you, all of those of you who vote in favor of this today, you're sending a message to, to Washington and to the other states uh, about giving South Carolina the freedom to use sound money. And at this point, I, I would like, uh, Mr. Chairman, with your permission, to ask all members of the South Carolina Sound Money mem members to stand. We work on this the heart. Have you, all of you stand who are members of the South Carolina Sound Money Committee. Christian Wheat, who's a key backer. Uh, Colonel Ray Moore, all, all of you. Some of these will be here to speak, but, but I just want to say thank you uh, to all the representatives who have worked on this. Uh, and I'm going to end because I've got to go back to candidate filing for conservative GOP members in, in Lexington County. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Mr. Howell, are you here? Would you answer a question from uh, Chairman Harris? Yes, Mr. Howell, I think what we've got before us today is much better and more succinct than what we had a couple of weeks ago. Um, I got one question. A couple of weeks ago, the language said that, that gold and silver may be a legal tender. Here we are saying it must be a legal tender, which I think makes a significant difference. Um, I don't know enough about gold and silver coins and trading, but if the U.S. mints a $20 gold piece, all right, the value of that $20 gold piece fluctuates daily. Um, when you're saying it must be tender, if I take in a $20 gold piece and I say today, based on the price of gold, this gold piece is worth $30.50. Does the person you're tendering it to have to take it at $30.50, or does he take it at the face value of what it was minted as? It, it, it's a great question, and uh, maybe before I, I, I answer, um, I've prepared a uh, page and a half of testimony, so I won't go into detail on that. Let me answer questions for you. One of the things that in answering that question, I think is important to understand or, or to uh, differentiate is that the, the value, if I'm using the term, that we're comparing it to is that of Federal Reserve notes, which will fluctuate, which will, uh, will, will show uh, with inflation, with the, the printing of, of fiat currency, which Federal Reserve notes are currently, because they're not backed by a, by a standard, uh, they will continue to grow and, and grow and grow. So the real true value uh, of, of gold and silver will maintain its actual value or that its price. It's the Federal Reserve notes that will that will rise uh, comparably to, to, to make that a more expensive value. I understand that, but um, if I want to buy a TV set and I and it's a thousand dollars and I take a thousand I take five hundred dollars in gold <coughs> coins face value and say as of today those gold coins are worth a thousand dollars. And you're required to take take it at what the gold value is today, not what's printed on the coin. That's the previous bill let it be optional. The 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 seller of merchandise could refuse it if he wanted to. This says you gotta take it. My question is, do you have to take it at the face value of the coin, or do you have to take it at whatever the price of gold is on that day? Yeah, it, it would be for the value of the price of the actual gold itself, not just the face value. All right, all right, and that's where I have a problem. How does the how does the guy that runs the TV sales store know today what the value of that is? It would be similar to uh, uh, we, we, we've seen the, the rising uh, price of other commodities of, of oil, uh, and yet uh, it doesn't change the local gas station from from daily. Uh, the price of, uh, of gasoline. <coughs> that doesn't help me with mom and pop out there that, that don't know at this minute in time what that gold you're tendering to them is worth. 
uh, and, and under this, they have to take it. And what if there's a dispute as to what gold's worth at this moment in time? They don't know that, I mean, somebody who's sophisticated might have a computer there, can immediately look up and says gold right now is selling for X amount per ounce, and therefore this coin right now is worth something. But you're telling every citizen in the state, if you get tender to gold coin, you got to accept it, and how do they know what it's worth at that moment in time? With uh, and I respectfully uh, mean this with the uh, the value that's that's it's traded upon uh, it, that information is reasonably foreseeable. It's actually what what it is. It's again, it, I would like to say that it's not. It's the Federal Reserve notes that are really truly at issue of fluctuating. this and I don't know who can speak for the group but we had language in there before that said it may be considered tender and both sides would have to agree to accept and to, to pay and to accept when you got that language I can understand the person who's sophisticated enough to figure out this is what it's worth at this moment in time can accept it and you can give it to it but when you're mandating that it be accepted um, I'm not sure I can impose that on every citizen in the state. I, I guess I know I've said this, so forgive me, uh, this learning committee, I don't mean to be... Uh, sure, and maybe you said it and I don't understand. But I think it's in how we look at and we approach uh, of what we're, the, the, the value, the, the true value of the note. We're looking at it currently as the fluctuating, as, 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 as you mentioned, you understand this, we're looking at it that uh, gold a piece is worth X amount of dollars in Federal Reserve notes. It's the gold that is, is consistent. Uh, it's the silver that is, is really, I guess, really consistent, which is based on the, the American dollar, uh, hasn't changed over time. Forgive me for not, I, I don't know off the top of my head, but if you look at the value, uh, I wish I would have prepared this for my, for my notes. If you look at the value of a, of a silver dollar and what it would have bought 100 years ago, it would have been uh, relatively for the same value as it was today. It's the Federal Reserve notes that have fluctuated. We understand all that, but what uh, Mr. Harris is trying to get at is uh, we, we don't feel comfortable in passing something that forces Walmart <coughs> to accept gold coins that, you know, and they got to look up on the computer and see what the value is right then and then, you know, it may be worth $1,800 an ounce today and uh, as it was a few months ago, and today it's worth, uh, you know, 1650 an ounce. Um, you know, where people uh, rightly, wrongly, truthfully or not, uh, people look at a dollar and they think it is a dollar, okay? And I understand what you're talking about, uh, but at the same time, uh, you know, I don't know that we can thrust uh, the trading of gold on every uh, any business out there if they don't want to do it. If they want to do it, that's fine. I think this would uh, help people do that. It would help people uh, understand how to report on their taxes and would pr perhaps uh, have uh, people doing the right thing by their taxes. But the, the uh, forcing it on people uh, is another matter. Uh, Colonel Moore. Maybe I can just make a comment. Um, <clears throat> What would happen if uh, we if we pass this bill? Then there would be new uh, institutions and organizations. Banks would have to get into exchange. We'd have a more coin shop where people would go and exchange their gold or their silver for Federal Reserve notes on the spot price of the day. But if we don't pass the legislation, then the mechanisms won't come into play. You know, is that you, you know the old movie? If you build it, they will come. From uh, Kevin. Uh, Costner, I, I love that movie about the baseball team from uh, that the old era. So basically what happens if we put this legislation in place then the mechanisms will follow, but if we don't put the legislation in place it won't be the mechanism. So it sounds complicated, but we certainly don't want to be exchanging 
the, the silver and gold for their face value, that defeats the whole purpose of the legislation. I understand that. Yeah. But uh, does that does that help at all? No, the banks will be in, in, involved in you know exchange uh, based on the price of the metal at that particular time. But it would be fluctuating. There's no getting around that because of the way the inflation is working with the dollar. So I don't know if that helps a little bit, but um, there will be the mechanisms they will follow. Uh, we we want this opportunity alongside the current uh, exchange of Federal Reserve notes. You know, we just want the opportunity for people to do it. But people say, well, they can do it now. Well, no. Uh, people won't barter. Uh, they'll hold their metals. They won't barter. So this is the only way to release this uh, new uh, opportunity into the culture and this new uh, stability uh, that uh, gold and silver will bring to our economy. All right, that's the best I can do with that. Colonel, let me let me ask you a question. And staff tells me they are interpreting it different than I'm what I'm hearing from the audience. Staff interprets what the language is. If it's a twenty dollar gold piece and you take it to Walmart, Walmart's going to take it for twenty dollars. No, we don't want that. <laughs> well, and that's we may have a problem today. Yeah. Then. Um, and I don't think, at least I'm not going to put Walmart or. Uh, Bessie's gas station in Lugoff to the burden of knowing what the value of gold is at the moment the person buys a tank of gas. Okay. Um, yeah. if, if the language went back to May and we have that sentence from the previous bill that says no one is required to take it, then that relieves my concerns. But if we're going to mandate that they take it, and if you think they're going to take it at more than what it says on the coin, then I think we need to go back to the drawing board again. Okay, well, uh, I think the mechanism will be in place. Uh, you know, perhaps people would go to the bank and exchange their um, coins for the Federal Reserve notes at that particular point. Um, there will be a debit and credit card. So that's why we have a study committee in the bill, because they will create these uh, mechanisms. They're not in place now. Sure. Yeah. And, and, and I agree with that, but that's not what this says. When it says it is legal tender, I believe the legal definition of legal tender says someone has to take it. So if this bill was signed in the law today and you go to well, the gas station and you pay with a, with a $20 coin that you say is worth $60 and he says, no, I'm going to take it for twenty dollars. What it says on the coin, then. Well, the, the, with, the, with the bill, you know, that's a good point. The bill's in, in play, and there's not the mechanisms that it won't be operational. It won't be functional, and that's what what one of our concerns, and that's why we wanted the study committee. And that might take months for there be a reconciliation between the old model of uh, monetary policy and this uh, alternative model, which we hope will come into play. Uh, as I said last time, I could pass out the study committee today, but I don't think that's all you want. Well, we certainly need something, uh, otherwise it'll, it'll languish and, and just fade away. It won't, it won't happen. But but there's got to be some kind of bill saying this is going to be legal tender in our state. And I don't know. And in, in your opinion, if it's legal tender, then I'm selling you something yeah. I have to yeah. take. All right. Thanks. Sixty-four. Uh, the change, the coins that were, uh, were were given to different denominations, different sizes, uh, were actually pure, well, or not pure, but uh, a high rate to or ninety percent of silver. So there can be different amounts, of, uh, different uh, sizes and variations, if you will, of the actual uh, silver, for example, uh, resulting change. Uh, 
But would, would it suit you to have uh, gold and silver as a mandatory legal tender, and it also be mandatory to change people return to you in gold or silver? I mean, yeah, I just want to know, how does, how does this scheme work? Yes, for, for me. You said barter a while ago. Traditionally, barter means goods for goods, and that doesn't involve any change. It's just a interchange of uh, commodities. Sure. How, how are you going to get your change out of a silver a gold piece? I, I would like to see to keep the integrity of the value of, of, of and uh, for change to be made. But there are other ways. Uh, you know, this, this bill is not uh, ridding uh, of a tender. It's putting into play the... the uh, the true legal tender that our founding fathers put into the Constitution, requiring states to to make payments, and nothing more but gold and silver, uh, for their debts. So, so if I buy, if I give someone a twenty dollar gold piece, and I'm entitled to three dollars and eighty cents change, how are you gonna give it to me? Is what I want to know. Bill's passed. I'd be happy to be able to, to provide that in silver to you, sir. So, so you want you want it to be in gold or silver change, or you want it to be in traditional coin? Uh, it would be my preference to keep the integrity to have it to have it uh, kept in, in metals. But this is not doing away with because this is not doing away with the other forms of, of legal tender. This is simply adding to uh, the amounts of legal tender. Well, what I'm suggesting is I don't want to mix them up. If you if I'm required, I a merchant am required to accept gold or silver. I think you ought to be required uh, to be given change in gold and silver, and, and, if, and if I don't have any, then I don't have to take the, the gold and silver in the first place. It's a good point, and because it doesn't rid uh, the Federal Reserve notes completely, I think this is an example of how important it would be to have a committee to study an example. Just what you're saying, I think well, this Maybe is we ought to start off with the committee then, because you got some unanswered questions, and you, and, you know, you and troubling questions to me. I would just like to get some of these notions uh, uh, addressed in advance before we march off into oblivion. Mr. Howe. Yes. Um, uh, what if we add a, we, we, you're familiar with our language, we have the, um, the first part which says that many gold and silver coins shall be legal tender. Yes. Okay. And uh, then any person may employ gold or silver, uh, gold or silver coin or both as legal tender in the state for payment of public debt. But then we add a third paragraph which says no party uh, is obligated to accept uh, uh, gold or silver coins. Okay, and that way, if somebody doesn't want to accept, they don't have to. And those that do want to accept, they can, and uh, it'll, it'll give you the opportunity. I, I think that's a, uh, a great idea, and I think that would help answer the Honorable Gentleman's question previously. Uh, so there's no force upon, so that uh, if, if someone at Walmart is not accepting this, then of course they're going to be returning it uh, in, in other denominations. Right. Mr. Chairman, I, yes, I don't know whether you were making a motion or not, but I, I, I would like to suggest that if, if, uh, if we want to address this matter somewhat, we eliminate section, uh, well, re eliminate the top three paragraphs and, uh, and, and just adopt the concept of having a joint committee for now. And uh, after that, there may be some answers to these uh, sort of unusual inquiries. Uh, but I mean, I, I, I think that is a, to eliminate the, in other words, the bill alone is fraught with concern. And, and, a, and a committee would have an opportunity to study this and come back and maybe come up with something we can enjoy participating in. Well, um, I think there is a support on the committee to uh, declare uh, many gold and silver coins as legal tender under state law and to allow people uh, if they wish uh, to employ them as legal tender in the payment of, of debts. Uh, however, if we have a provision in there that no party is obligated to accept gold and silver coins, uh, then, uh, I mean, this, I think this accomplishes um, what we want. There's no coercion here. 
if people want to accept it, that's fine. If they don't want to accept it, then we'll have the study committee to come back and figure out that this is a worthwhile. Uh, well, Mr. Chairman, I, I, I understand your concept and I, and I understand the, the logic. It just seems to me like denominating gold and silver and legal tender at this moment is a bridge too far. Many times in the legislative halls, study committees are utilized initially when there's a fresh notion and it gives an opportunity to, uh, uh, to flesh out uh, new concepts so that it will not be trouble. Uh, so, 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 I mean, I don't have any idea what the other four members of the subcommittee want, but I, but I would say denominating anything as legal tender at this time in as much as, wasn't it only one state, Utah, had adopted this bill? Correct. <clears throat> well, I don't really see any point in us trying to emulate Utah. Well, you know, there are there are businesses that already barter with gold and silver. You know, I, and uh, I think we declared a legal tender. Uh, you know, it, I think it would be easier for them to uh, to exchange, and I think it would be an encouragement to understand that it is legal tender. If it is legal tender, you have gains uh, for income tax purposes and that sort of thing. And I, I think it would, um, I think it would be helpful. I think it'd be helpful to the state. I think it'd be helpful to those individuals who feel more <coughs> comfortable with gold and silver. I think the dollar could those that uh, I think some people's. Uh, Trust is misplaced in gold and silver. I think uh, a lot of people think that this would be the all the end all if the dollar would collapse sometime in the future. But if the dollar would ever collapse, I don't care how much gold and silver you have, it's going to be in trouble. And, uh, but, uh, you know, I don't have a problem with people uh, trading gold, with gold and silver. That's what they want to do it. They don't want to do it. They don't have to do it. And I think if we added that provision in there that it would allow that to happen. And if it did catch on and the banks you know, got involved in the exchange and so forth, that, that would be other opportunities for people to be employed. Um, so, you know, I don't really see a downside to this by making it optional. I only see um, uh, a bright side to it. Well, I appreciate your, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, your opinion, but I respectfully <coughs> disagree. Thank you. I think this study committee alone will really weaken the opportunity that we have here in, in South Carolina. We, of course, want the study committee because there's got to be a lot of reconciliation and mechanisms that need to come into play. So rather than see a, a, the bill just die away, which is what I'm uh, concerned about this morning, uh, you know, we could go with the idea of May because uh, May use it, uh, make it a legal tender at, at some level. This is a baby step in the, in the right direction. And um, it may be legal tender. Then people would have the option to, to use it, and uh, some might may decline. But we think people will inevitably move in this direction because the, uh, of the instability of the dollar. Uh, they're going to be looking for a stable um, currency, and this is what this will, will represent. So I'd urge you to proceed not just with the study committee uh, alone, but uh, change the language if this is a problem for some of the members and just say may use it as legal tender. And that gives South Carolina a start and, uh, and then the study committee will be in place perhaps over a year or two, I uh, don't know how long that will take to reconcile all the issues uh, of some of which are being raised this morning. But we have to have some sort of statement in law that this is legal tender as provided in Article One, Section 10 of the Constitution. Very specific there. Right, and you know, I, and the other thing that, that this is going to do also is, um, you know, there is no sales tax from legal tender. Right, that's right. Very good. Legal, legal tender, and what this bill would do would make it legal tender, and those that were trading uh, gold and silver coins or whatever wouldn't, as it is now state law, there is no sales tax in the trading of gold and silver coins. However, with the uh, new tax reform, all, I think all the sales tax exemptions are off the table, including that one. Uh, I know states in, the states of North Carolina and Georgia have no sales tax on, on the trading of gold and silver. Um, I think Mr. Sheen, Senator Sheen and uh, Representative Vick uh, <coughs> got the sales tax exemption for the gold and silver several years ago. Uh, this bill would make it clear that gold and silver coins would be considered uh, and I don't have any problem with it, shall be uh, considered legal tender. 
lines as long as no party is obligated to use it. Okay. And, uh, and then this bill would also protect uh, gold and silver coins as being legal tender, which there would be no sales tax realized from the, the trading of those. Yeah, that's a very important uh, provision because, you know, we don't tax money. Right. Exactly. I hope that helps a little bit. I, I, I see this, this concern. Okay. Right. Mr. Harris. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to vote for the amendment and I'm going to vote for the bill as amended. I think we're creating a, a conflict in the bill itself and as the bill moves forward, I may have to change my position. But if you look at the definition of legal tender, I don't think that's a statutory definition, but if you look at Black's Legal Dictionary or whatever, legal tender means it must be accepted in, for a debt. So in the first paragraph we're saying it must be accepted for a debt and then two paragraphs later we're saying it doesn't have to be but it in an effort to at least have the issue continue to move forward I'm, I'm willing to support it with the language <coughs> that, that specifically says somebody doesn't have to accept it if they don't want to <laughs> All right. Oh, everybody understand the Harrison Amendment? All right. All in favor of the Harrison Amendment? Aye. Opposed? Aye. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. 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 Thank you.